The Giants have more players in the Hall of Fame than any other club. From Mathewson to Mays to Marichal, the Giants are well represented. However, you don't have to be enshrined in Cooperstown to feel pride in wearing the orange and black. Each player has a unique place in history as part of one of the most storied franchises in sports. Along their baseball journey, each of these players has celebrated team victories and has savored individual achievements. Being a giant is a privilege. Returning to San Francisco is emotional. Some of these men played for other clubs, but as you will learn, they will be forever giants. Ask him if he's got that red light on his helmet. Do you what? You still got that red light on your helmet? <laughs> Obviously, of all the teams I played for, this was my favorite team. And to have the honor to play with Willie Mays, Orlando Cepeda, uh, Juan Marichal, Willie McCovey, uh, Mike McCormick, Jimmy Davenport, you know, we really had a, a an array of good players. Hey, you bring your whole, bring your whole, like, bring your gear? No, I just did You going to catch today? <laughs> you know, my memories, I've played 12 seasons in the big leagues, but the six years I've played for the Giants by far, you know, outlast all the other memories that, that I've had with other teams. I told everybody, I said, I ain't seen this. I ain't seen this. Oh, I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna put the sunglasses on, a little eye black, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a good time, you know. And that, that's the thing about this. I mean, you got a lot of guys that that we haven't seen in a, a long time. Uh, you know, some of my teammates like Scott Geraltz and Mike Felder. I hadn't seen them in so long, so it's it's gonna be good seeing all the guys. Just the fact that you get to come around here and see everybody. Just I said, I don't need to go out in uniform and go out and play. I just you come know, here, eat breakfast, and see everybody. That's what's great about bringing a Legends game, bring some of the guys back, even the guys you haven't played with, to know the Jim Davenports and Hobie Landris and the Gaylord Perrys. It's a pleasure to meet them being on the same field. And then guys that, you know, are younger, the Jeff Kemp's, the JT Snows. You guys do you know, too, you always too young. young. Too young. Got to sprinkle some youth. He's going to be here with this thing. Well, we're almost there. June 11, 2011, wasn't just another day in the middle of another season of Giants baseball. It was a day marked on the calendar for these former Giants, a chance to put on the uniform again, a chance to relive, if only for a moment, a relished time in their lives. You just feel like spring training all over again when we all been away for a long time and then we all come together. And so it's, it's just a tremendous feeling. Players are so distinctive that as soon as we see that one characteristic again, we're back into that ear. It's like going in a time machine. Hey, how you doing? What's up? Look at you. Look at you. Hey, Scotty Garrell. You guys ready to whack? How you doing, buddy? Oh, yeah. You look good. You see you guys. You're looking great. To be remembered is, it's the greatest thing that can happen to you. And when you're in an organization that has basically made their ballpark a museum to its history, and they've got good history, and you go along the walls and, and, and you see your picture there, or the team that you were on is there, you're being remembered. For the first time since the early 90s, the Giants brought back their legends to play the game they love. Everybody in there needs to be in there. The Giants have done a lot of things very, very well. We made some mistakes over time. Um, and I think that continuing to involve people who were part of the Giants in the past helps us make the present day Giants both a better baseball team and a better enterprise and gives us a more solid foundation for building out what we're doing and improving what we're doing and enhancing what we're doing. You know, I often think that when you think of the 2011 Giants, the current, or any current team, the current team is made up of all the other teams that played before them. And, uh, and bringing back players into the ballpark, letting them feel uh, loved again, having, having fans remember who they are and what they did, uh, I mean, that's, the Giants have always done that. We're, we're over a century, year, century old. Uh, 
uh, we're a classic franchise, and I think it's part of what we, we need to do. First thing of good news is no clubhouse dues today. So, uh, and there's also no spread, so this is it. Um, and no showers. <laughs> the ability to hit, run, and throw might have diminished for these legends. Ow. Ow. Trash talking, on the other hand, that talent never goes away. You know it, you and I, that's the way we worked it. They don't even, they don't even make the, the like, the shorter pants now. They got, everybody's got pajama pants on. Uh, but we used to wear them, not pajama pants going to sleep every night. <laughs> I know, but, Sorry, George, Will, those are a little lower than normal, though. Uh-huh. Why are they so tight? Because I look good. Oh. You want me to wear the flip downs? Huh? See ya. You hit one hanging slider. Keep walking. Hey, I got four dingers. Oh, all right. I mean, it's not like you. You got like 200. Uh -huh. Thanks for stopping by. Many of these former giants have been back to Third and King, honored as part of reunions or special ceremonies. In fact, most of them have been asked to be part of the Wall of Fame an area dedicated to immortalizing Giants legends. I'm doing that Wall of Fame deal. I mean, I got in by the skin of my teeth because, you no, know. No, you didn't, because you were a Giant. I was a Giant, but I mean, the, the criteria that they had was you have five years in an All-Star or nine or 10 years in the same club. But still, with that being said, for, that, for me to be able to like come here and get closure. It was a great honor. Sometimes you just retire and that's it, you know, you know, no one ever, no one remembers. You just go about your, your life and you still have a lot of life to live. And so it was a nice way to come back and get some recognition and get closure in the game. Oh, it's great. Yeah, I feel like I never left. Still windy, still cold, still fun. Yeah, no, this is great. Who's up, Estes? Uh, he told me he's got four dingers. That's, oh, wow. He's 38 years old. He should still be playing. He shouldn't be with the old timers. This is great that they did this. It's really nice to see everybody. It's, it's really good, uh, nice to see my dad back in his element again. Uh, we were talking about when, we, when he came out of the, the locker room, it was kind of like our, our kid like, playing his first baseball game. We're so proud of him and just very excited to be here. And it's, it's great to see him back with the guys and just super excited. There you go. Good Thanks, work, Dad. You're welcome. <laughs> They've heard, you know, that you've played, but not actually know that you play in these big stadiums and the, what it's all about. So, uh, you know, my son was like, hey, are you going you gonna, to uh, break a muscle today? How you doing? Good to Great. see you again. Great. How's everything, everything been? Everything's been really good. Good, good, good. I, uh, we were eating breakfast and I didn't get a chance to go see you, but my, my son was like, there's Bill Miller over there, Dad. I said, he says, he hit two homers and two grand slams in one game. I said, go see him, go tell him hello. Is this your bat? Yeah, one of them. It's white hot. You like that, huh? <laughs> you get just some swings in here. Thanks. I think what it means to be a giant is that you join an organization which is more than an organization, it's a fellowship. And from year to year and from decade to decade, that fellowship grows. There was, there was a weight uh, that came with putting on a uniform, you know, you had the responsibility of entertaining the fans and, and as, as players, especially me, I felt, uh, I felt a big responsibility to win. Just some great, great players uh, en enabled me to play better baseball too. I just wanna hit one out. <laughs> It was, al it was already a hard time to hit one out over there. Hey, I played here, what, I played here three years, four years. I hit one home run over there. And I don't know how many you hit, but I hit one. Uh, there was no egos. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, none of us had the baseball ego, thought we were better than anybody else. We just went out and, and played the game. What's going on with you now? I ain't doing that, man. I'm, you know, doing a little coaching up in uh, Rockland with the kids and all that, just teaching. And I tore my rotator cuff. That's why I can't play today. So they got me managing. On the DL? On the DL. On the DL, baby. Boats. We go way back, baby. <laughs> I think I represented the, the working guy. You know, I wasn't a great ball player, you know, the Hall of Fame type and all that. Um, in, you know, injuries or not. But I, I felt in my heart that 
you know, the working guy, that eight to five guy. You know, I wanted to play the game as hard as I could, as long as I could, and just did everything to win. Double O's, baby. Oh, you still, man, you no, still no. got it. Look no at you. Way. Look at you. Just yeah. go out there and That's smack a fly ball out. <laughs> no, it ain't. That's a bullet in the box scores. I hope my teammates loved me because they knew what they were going to get from me day in and day out. They knew that when the bell rang, that I would be there every day. I was going to give them 150% while I was out there. I tried to get the same thing out of them, and they gave it right back. And that's why, you know, in the late 80s, early 90s, we had some great Giants teams here. The 2010 World Champion Giants won with grace and dignity, epitomizing the team first attitude displayed from generations of Giants. So when the final out was made and the trophy was hoisted, a sense of pride was felt by all of these men. You don't understand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, man. And on this day in the summer of 2011, the smiles on the faces of these former Giants were a little bigger. Yeah. Now, don't tell me you're going to throw with that ring. I ain't taking it off. You're not taking it off? No way. <laughs> right, so. I'm proud of that thing, man. Yeah, me too. Yes, sir. I think one of the most proud, proud moments that I ever had uh, being a part of the Giants was watching them celebrate the World Series last year. That was pretty cool. It pisses me off, though. I look older than you. It ain't right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Skitchy. God dang it. What's the secret? Where's the fountain of youth? Is it in San Mateo? What the hell? It's, it's, <laughs> it's watching Giants baseball. I got a job in sales and marketing working for the Giants uh, at the beginning of 2010, and uh, the timing was absolutely <laughs> impeccable because uh, the team won the World Series, obviously, and I, I got my first World Series ring, not as a player, but as a front office employee, and that's... I'm kind of humbled by that, it's very special. To tell you the truth, the best time I've had was that parade. That parade down Market Street was just an unbelievable experience. I had a chance to ride in the alumni float, to see the people and to see the joy in their faces, and to watch the whole playoffs and the World Series. It was just unbelievable, and to be part of it as a giant, that'll never, I'll never forget that moment. Now seeing the Giants become world champions in 2010 is a very proud moment for not only I know myself, but also other Giant alumni. Awesome. Very cool. It's about time. Daddy, when we were... When we were in the clubhouse and stuff like that, Tiny was my dance teacher. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I had no rhythm whatsoever, and he tried, he tried to give me some rhythm in there. <laughs> that he had he on the toe though. No. He, he his rhythm was that that he on the toe. I'm always that. Had the rhythm up there. It was on the dance floor. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. that, that was the only rhythm he needed. That he on the toe. A lot of guys who, when the bright lights come on, they don't want to have the bat in their hands or they don't want to have the ball on the mound. And I was quite the opposite. I mean, if there was a situation in the game that was crucial and clutch, you know, I wanted to have the bat. And Clark hits it up the middle in a center field base hit, and the Giants lead three to one. Will Clark was the a superstar. He loved to go in when the pressure was on the line, a big game, and against the toughest pitcher. Probably one of the best guys that I ever played with. And we'll have that intensity that you like to see when you're a fan. He's got something, he's got that X factor that, uh, that everybody responds to. There's a mystique to Will Clark. Every time he stepped on a baseball field, teammates, and even opposing players would gravitate to his gregarious personality. Oh, Will played the game right. He was always good. Um, and a lot of people thought he was cocky. I didn't think he was cocky. I thought he was very confident. And I really like people like that, and he was a very good player. Dunstan and Clark squared off against one another in the 1989 NLCS. They were teammates in St. Louis in 2000. They are teammates again as special assistants with the current day Giants. Needless to say, they have spent a lot of time together. Well, you didn't even you didn't even get your jersey with your name on it? No, you know, man, some of us are still with the big team. 
Well, I mean, you got to have you got to have your name on the back of your jersey. You got to have your name on the back of your jersey. You know, Will always lights the place up, whether it's the clubhouse or the field club lounge or whether it's the batting cage. Um, and he was um, he was in rare form. You might hit the wall. I ain't trying to hit the wall. I'm trying to hit it at you. Oh, get out of here, you old goat. Oh, every one of those was at Wrigley. You'd have been like, oh, man. He chirps with the best of them. Uh, so, does, uh, so does Sean. Oh, I remember when the ball used to go all in the stands for a home run. Now you can't get it over the right field this hand. Just a normal pop-up. <laughs> I was really struck by um, by how competitive they were. They were, they were, I wouldn't say trash talking, but they were needling each other a lot. And there was a little home run contest going on out there. Don't let me, let me down. I got serious money. You got, yeah, you got, a, you got a side bet going on. Well, up there, I just or? said you could wake him up in the middle of the like, night, uh, you know, after a New Year's celebration. You go out and get hit <laughs> for the 20 years. <laughs> Don't let me down. Oh, what are we, Keith? Oh, let's down. go. What are you doing? Oh, come on, man! Swing the bat! Go! Oh. Get out! <laughs> hey, thank you. Thank you. Can you believe it? We got one out of here. Chris Fire's doing a great job of throwing BP and he laid it right in there for me. Okay. Let me go. How you doing, baby? Good, good. How's good. everything going with you? So you're wind deep. Uh huh. Just doing that, oh, yeah. Still got it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at you. Look at you. You're still the best. Watch Will Clark hit again. Are you kidding? The best. Hey, I'm waiting to see you. That's that's our that's all the problem we have here. You know, you get a legend come out like JT Snow out here, and he's scared to take batting practice because he doesn't want to mess really? up his golf swing. <laughs> hey, don't think I didn't see you snagging that stuff out there. You a power shag. You were, you a power shagging right there. Nice job, man. All right, JT's trying to hit a home run here. That's got a chance. That's got a chance. <laughs> He's fired up right now. Come on, man. There it is. There it is. Yes. <laughs> JT Snow is up there. All right, we talked about this earlier. He wasn't going to swing too hard because he didn't want to mess up his golf swing. He has a golf swing, golf game later on. And so he takes about a round or two. When he starts getting a fever, he hit a ball out the ballpark. Now he's back leg and everything. See, it never, it never leaves. You just want to get back in there, do it again. Hey, Estes and I, Estes and I were talking out there, right? He told us, he told us he was not going to swing too hard because he didn't want to mess up his golf game. Yeah, well, you! Yeah, he's going yeah, out, yeah, he's yeah, going yeah. out of town. I don't, don't want to run and ride. <laughs> and, and what's the first thing you do? You all of a sudden, you, you getting close start. and you start back legging some stuff? I'm pulling everything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We, we in this for fun, but we'll, we'll be talking some smack in the clubhouse. And especially, especially when Sean Dunson comes up here, because if Sean Dunson doesn't hit any, if Sean Dunson doesn't hit any, oh, we're going to give him some grief. Don't hurt those people out there, Sean. All right, JT left, so you better leave. You don't leave, you're going to catch it. You know you're going to catch some grief. You don't leave. You better leave. Lowing in. He wants it lowing in, Guardy. So he got no excuses. You heard the talk, he wants to pitch low and in from Guardy, which is his best chance to drive it. And he, there he goes, he wants to hit one out of the park, which I think he just did. So he's off the hook. Hey, look, look, I know what you're doing. You're saying, oh, the wind's blowing in, the wind's blowing in. Oh man, that's deeper. I want you to, I want you to go out. He did leave, he did leave. He left right over the right side of Chevron. All line drives. About six doubles and eight. That's what I'm talking about. To walk back in casually the cage and, uh, hit the ball as far as they did. Uh, it was just a reminder of the demands of this game. How, what an extraordinary set of skills you have to have to play the game. You know I hate to give you credit. Why? 
still got nice springs. <laughs> yeah. Not no more pop. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't even swing hard the first one you get out. I still hate your cuts. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever you at, I'm aiming at you. Wherever you at. <laughs> hey, I'm coming for you. Ah! Ah! Hey! Hey! You know, <laughs> you know I told you I was coming for you. A baseball player's legacy is defined by statistics. This gathering of legends had nothing to do with numbers. It had everything to do with the uniqueness of being a giant. These legends celebrated the organization's first world championship in San Francisco, and now are even more proud to have worn the orange and black. Conversations that started decades ago will continue for years to come. Because these men, are forever giants.